Welcome to the second edition of the Weather Track Feature Release Party. Whoop, whoop. Uh, we have Bob Beers, our product manager, uh, who is here to talk about some awesome developments in the WeatherTrack Two Wire platform. Excited to hear all about the new stuff happening with WeatherTrack Two Wire. And my friend Lance Elliott, who is our user experience designer, uh, and he is here to talk about some developments, not only in the app, but some other things that we're doing as a company that we wanted to highlight for you guys and keep you up to date on everything that we're working on to help support you and keep you up to speed. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining me this morning. Thank yep, you, thanks, Ben. Man. Um, it is Always a pleasure to see your smiling faces, even those of you who recently shaved all your hair off. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that other picture. Oh my goodness! Yes, <laughs> it was hilarious. Like a side by side. I wish I could do it. <laughs> oh, you're all Mr. Smooth, and now you're all Mr. Shaved. Oh, Mr. it's still hot out. Yes, nice. Um, so, uh, who wants to go first? Uh, I think I can go first and kind of okay. give an easy kind of demo and run through of WeatherTrack Central to show off some of the new areas to support some of the new two wire updates that we have coming out. Um, I think Lance has some really awesome stuff to demo for the new mobile app that we can kind of show off. Um, his might take a little bit longer. So I was thinking I could kind of go through our stuff because mine's really more infrastructure and functionality and not as much to show. So I think I can kind of give you kind of the quick run through as a uh, kind of the, the, segue and introduction into what we're doing. So uh, what Ben had alluded to as far as some updates to the WeatherTrack 2 wire. There we go. Now I'm seeing it. This is uh, live today on the WeatherTrack homepage. Um, very soon, here in the next two weeks, just about two weeks from today, in fact, we are going to be officially releasing a new 200 station controller. It'll be specific to OptiFlow. So it'll be an OptiFlow XR controller that'll support up to 200 stations on our uh, H2O platform. So this will be only for the H2O. So our legacy two wires not updating. This will just be for OptiFlow and the H2O, but expanding it all the way up to 200 stations. Um, because if you have 200 stations, you need OptiFlow. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And being able to water and effectively manage those water windows with that many stations, you know, on it helps tremendously to have this kind of technology backing it. Um, so really was very focused and intentional to move this kind of platform and functionality to OptiFlow specifically. Um, but all throughout the UI now, we've plumbed up to 200 stations. So as you're working your way through and looking at different areas, we can now support 200 station capacities across the UI for manual operations, for programming, for all of the above throughout the UI. So our controllers with 200 stations or 120, rarely do we see actually 200 stations on a single controller, but already through our beta and field testing that we've been implemented for about a month and a half now, we've seen a 112 station, 130 station. We have another 136 station, looks like it's coming through. Um, so we definitely have these bigger sites out there, these bigger controllers out there. Um, and to help support those, larger wire paths to help support those larger geographic areas with these large supported systems on them, we wanted to implement some new alerting functionalities too for the new firmware. So uh, the OptiFlow XR controller with H202 wire um, with the new firmware, we'll be able to support these four new decoder um, alerts. So sometimes during the programming process, someone might mistakenly uh, address or program two station sixes. And so this will now be able to call that out. So as soon as you install those up, energize the two wire path, will notice and recognize that conflict and be able to alert you to where the conflict is occurring. So now you can quickly find it, diagnose it and resolve it without having to go through the full kind of blind process of why is this acting weird? Why is this let me behaving? let me tell you as somebody who's been through the process of why is this acting weird? <laughs> thank you so much for adding that. That is a very valuable addition to our field troubleshooting toolkit. Yep. And so we we kind of broke these up by the the master valve, which we've identified as a critical alert. So if you're not effectively communicating and monitoring the master valve, we want to make sure you're aware of that 
and this is a critical level alert. And then in the valve and station level decoders, we have those as majors. So you can still be functional, um, but we're not going to really shut anything down in this area. And that's so, in lockstep with everything else. Like any time we have a master valve alert, it's always critical. Right? Yeah, if, we're, if, if it's affecting overall flow for a site, we, we need to make sure we're on that ASAP. Yep. Um, so in addition to the decoder address alert, and when there's a conflict there, we also have a station decoder not found. And this could be, you know, a number of different reasons. It could be that you've installed a decoder that hasn't been programmed. So again, just sometimes these mistakes happen and you go to try to find it or talk to it. We're going to alert you that this isn't there. We can't see this one. Um, it might not be incorrectly installed. So it might have the wire connections may have come loose. Um, may not have been installed correctly with, you know, a good DVR-Y connection. You could have just some wire nuts. Sometimes we run into these things out in the field. It gets wet. It comes apart. It doesn't look right. And so over time, as we run into different areas or issues with communication to a decoder, we can now highlight those and tell you exactly where it's at and what we're seeing. Um, so... Is that leveraging that true bi-directional communication that is part of the, the infrastructure? It is. And so what's cool about this update and kind of to reiterate before, a lot of this update is functional as opposed to being really in your face in terms of the user experience. Um, it's the ability for the controller to talk to the decoder and then realize it's not able to have that bi-directional communication and then issue an alert. And so it's trying to talk back and forth between the controller and the decoder and then recognizing there's an issue. And then now we're plumbing this all the way up into WeatherTrack Central. And so on our, on our older firmware versions for WeatherTrack 2Wire, we don't actually have the 2Wire alerts in WeatherTrack Central, but with this update, we're able to now send it to your mobile, send it to your phone or the mobile app, your phone and email alerts as well as the alerts in WeatherTrack Central. So this fully plums up the communication structure from the decoder decoder to controller and the controller to the server in WeatherTrack Central. And so we're pulling together your overall two wire path all the way up into the cloud. And so that's a big, big change. Um, this was a pretty big lift from our engineering team. Um, a lot of smart people to figure it all out, but we're able to kind of get this full system architecture now up into the system. And this is gonna really open the door for us to get two wire diagnostics and then two wire to pr programming from the mobile app. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this heavy lifting that we've done for this release is just creating that overall system architecture that lets us now go forward into new development areas for diagnostics and programming and a lot of really cool things that we can fully leverage the technology platform for. Exactly. Yes. Good foundation. That's great, Bob. So we're super excited about this. So 200 station OptiFlow XR controller on H202 wire. And then new decoder alerts, all of the reports have been updated to now accommodate 200 stations. Um, and then a few kind of nuancey things there, just want to kind of point out is this will be on a new version of firmware that we can push down. We can over the air update to controllers that already have 8X firmware. We'll have a new OptiFlow key. So for those sites that want to convert a Pro 3 to OptiFlow, and have up to 200 station, we'll need an additional station key. So the, the 200 station OXR will need two station keys. So if you go from 48 to 200, and then if you go from 96 to 200, you only need one station key, but then we'll need the new OptiFlow key that has the new firmware on it to be able to make that conversion over. So and implied then, in that is that this is not a heavy hardware lift. This is compatible with the hardware that we already have in the field. We could take a 96, add a key, and make it a 200. 100%. It is it, the exact same hardware as the OXR 48 station, as the 96 station, and then same for the Pro 3 and, and its iterations too. So exact same hardware base, just different firmware to support new functionalities. Right. And, then, and, and to emphasize uh, for the advanced two wire people out there, this is only for two wire, right? We're not trying 200 stations conventional wire. There's no way those would all fit together, but yeah. this is only on the two wire OptiFlow XR platform. Yep, exactly. So coming out here in about two weeks, the, the field testing has gone tremendously. We, we found a couple of things that we learned from. We've already made those changes and improved it. 
Um, but otherwise, it's stable. It's looking great, working mm -hmm. great. So we've had really good field test experience, and uh, we're excited to roll out a, a strong, stable update with a lot of cool new features uh, to the overall OptiFlow two-wire family. So right. pretty cool. That's very awesome. nice. And to support that, we've got some new mobile app functionalities for some really cool programming capabilities that we'll be introducing along with the 200 station. Oh, is that a segue? I think that was a segue for Lance. <laughs> it's a good, it's Look a good at that. And we nice. segue. <laughs> yes, let me uh, share Wait, my screen. Wait, before we do that, ah, yes. uh, anybody listening, I know we've got a bunch of two-wire experts on the phone. Um, any questions for Bob before we move on? I've got... Um, John Bannock says, new mm -hmm. training available online to help with the updates. I am working on that as we speak. I am actually uh, finishing up what Lance will talk about and the 3.5 release due out this week. And I will have support materials uh, for the two-wire release when we do that two weeks. Bob, is that right? Yep. We're targeting August 4th is okay. specifically. Yes. So two weeks, I think, from today. Mm -hmm. that, same for mobile as well, Ben. That's, uh, we'll just release everything on... Oh, on that day. And, my bad. and what's nice too about the uh, firmware is that it also, the, the programming of decoders uh, should be a bit easier uh, than in the, than it was in the, a previous, the previous uh, 96 station uh, environment. So uh, for ones who have experienced programming decoders before, uh, we hope that they'll enjoy this, this, this experience much better. Um, yeah, yeah we, should be. we really dug into the into the panel display. Mm. And Lance mm. did a lot of really good work where he works with some customers and internal teams. And uh, for a first time user, it should be far more simple. We've mm -hmm. really simplified the process. Um, I think if you're already familiar with it, it'll probably feel familiar mm -hmm. in how it works. It's just a little bit cleaner and a little easier to use. We've but just taken out the hieroglyphs and the, you know, yeah. all the, <laughs> the, the, the code, the words code words the actually make sense now. Yes. It's good stuff. I really enjoy it. Yes. I, I think it, if uh, we can say what it is versus having to interpret a, a code or some type of serial number, then uh, if we had the opportunity to, to just spell out the, uh, what say the decoder was uh, that this uh, attached and things like that that it uh, would just make make it go a little a little faster but yeah well, let me share my screen a few things to to touch on um, let's see here if I can do this so part screens. of the reason why we're going to release the mobile 3.5 and some of the updates mm -hmm. we have with 3.5 with the 200 station controller is this will be the first time with OptiFlow that we will ship the controller out from the factory in its OptiFlow mode. So the firmware base is 8.9. So we usually call it 8x firmware or optimized firmware or the OptiFlow. And so we'll be able to ship it out in its optimized state. And then the mobile app, we can now program the entire controller um, up until we get to the hydraulic tree, but all the station programming, the program times, all of this we can now do in the mobile app. So the Absolutely. mobile app provides a lot of that panel functionality that you would normally have to go through and hit a button, a punch of buttons, speed it up, make it way easier. Now, mm -hmm. instead of doing it the panel, we can use the mobile app and then set up the controller, I think a little bit more easily and intuitively. Absolutely. Yes. So what we've done is we've brought everything from or nearly everything from the program tab under uh, Smart Irrigation or WeatherTrack Central to the mobile app. So I'll just choose a controller a demo that I have set up. And this is uh, building A at a make-believe location. Um, so when you go to the controller settings, you'll see that what used to be the master valve override and unlock lock have now been brought underneath one uh, tab here called access. So we have master valve override. And then if lock, if this indeed was a uh, OptiFlow enabled controller, we'd see unlock lock capabilities here. Um, but what that has done is given us room now for this new program tab that will mirror what you see here off to the left on 
uh, in WeatherTrack Central. So we brought all the features from uh, the setup area, as you see here. Uh, then if we get down into the flow section, we have the table, the point of connection. We're able to go into this section and assign uh, main lines, uh, go right down the column, uh, right down the row from the master valve to flow sensor to pump start. So you'll see master valve, flow sensor, pump start. And depending on the controller and the setups, of course, these will reflect uh, what's available. And uh, even assigning the POC to a mainline is really nice in that you get a lot of visuals as to which programs are, be are using that uh, ma mainline. And then you can see which POCs are assigned to the mainline. And uh, as you begin to kind of work in here, uh, you'll see those changes reflected, uh, which can, especially when you're dealing with A through H programs, that's really nice to be able to, to see those, uh, those change in real time. Uh, so coming back to, we've got the flow section, we've got this section underneath with the flow alert clearing and the station high flow offsets, et cetera. We didn't uh, bring under, uh, bring into uh, the app, the exclude stations. That's a a bit of more of a desktop type of uh, uh, feature that makes a bit more sense to, to live here and not something that's visited very frequently. Um, then even all the way down, I'll, I'll show you in a second how we address this station flow table, but uh, the days and time section is below with all of the programs. Just Wait, you before see. you move on to that, I yes. just wanna say, uh, for those of you out there, John Bannock, who has gone through the process of go, uh, going out to a site and going through, figuring out what flow sensors and what master valves and trying mm -hmm. to walk back and forth to the controller to make sure that it all works. And uh, think of how many steps this will save on a trip like that to have oh, absolutely. access to those programs in your pocket. Yes, that's that's so true. And, and wanting to really begin to move uh, these types of things over into mobile, it's been something we've wanted to do for a long time. And will continue to do as, as we, as it develops, but, but uh, yes, I agree. I mean, there's going into C program A here, which mirrors, we'll, we'll be able to see that as you can look off to the left, that it is assigned to mainline one. Um, there isn't a name yet, but if there was a, a unique program name, you'd see that in the list and all of the, this row is, is represented all the way down to optimized by weather track. Uh, and if we were to go to days a week by month, you can see the, uh, the, the full grid there that allows us to uh, check the days or just make fun little shapes and patterns, <laughs> which is what I do. It would be nice if, this, if we did have a little snake game or a little Easter egg in here uh, that would come to life, but uh, well, that'll have to come later. We'll gamify you, later. Yes, but we can definitely, you can select rows, you can select everything. Uh, so, uh, it's really nice to see all that stuff uh, come under the the, the app's uh, roof. Um, this is a great uh, new addition too, in, in that you will be pleasantly uh, reminded that uh, you are leaving a page and have not applied or saved the changes. So that's, that's great and very helpful, especially if you've done a lot of work and uh, navigated away from that, uh, this will prompt you to make sure to hit that apply button. And to me, this is what we've always been missing on the app. Like to me, mm -hmm. this is huge because the days and times, the managing when your irrigation system will run is a huge part of the daily management that the guys in the field are going through, right? You might Definitely. tweak a station here or there, but with this drought, with all of the conditions that we need to manage water in, it's those start times, water windows and water days that are constantly changing and really, really nice to have on the app so you can manage it as you go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and especially with, uh, like you mentioned, bringing in all of the additional programming options that were uh, found on in the advanced section of, of uh, for example, auto mode here. So now if uh, station one, which is in this case uh, in auto mode, all of those additional Features are now represented, target mad, location on slope, uh, microclimate, et cetera. And in addition to that, 
the global section off to the right has uh, flow rate, high flow threshold, and low flow threshold, always a tongue twister, <laughs> uh, which reflects the uh, station flow section on the program page. So this can be an intimidating table to look at, but in reality, there are just uh, three or two fields that you have control over. Um, and as you'll see on station one, I had uh, added a user-defined GPM here, um, which the app makes note of by putting user in uh, parentheses. Uh, and if this was a learned flow, had, if it had been learned and a user a GPM had not been defined, then the users, uh, those words would not be present. So it's nice you were able to look and know if that, if a user has kind of overridden or entered their own uh, uh, values, you'll be uh, prompted in the app. And but, killer to have right at your fingertips in the field, right? Because sometimes mm -hmm. as you're establishing flow on a system, you'll get alerts where just because of the fluctuation in the, the pressure in the system, you might have exceeded a threshold by a gallon or two, right? You go out you absolutely to make sure that nothing's broken. And now you can just make that change right on your app as you're mm -hmm. in the field troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, Jeff, this is for everything, everybody. Um, the uh, all controllers from LC on. Yeah, uh, the it, app is an update for all app users, yes. not just uh -huh. the OptiFlow 200 station. Yes. Good question, Jeff. Yeah, very good question. And and so, yes, you'll have this. Uh, if uh, whatever is available for your controller, you'll have uh, access to those. So OptiFlow is a bit more complicated, as we know, and requires the configure and optimize page to work in. So so uh, those elements, like the like Ben mentioned, hydraulic tree and things are not uh, uh, present in the app. Um, but everything that you see here on the program page, even if we were to have visited a OptiFlow controller, um, we might see a lot of information. We might not be able to change it because it's just there for our reference uh, to reference. But nonetheless, it would be displayed in in the app as well. Uh, and um, Additionally, just one one little thing snuck in by by uh, uh, by request by uh, great customers like yourselves uh, was the current depletion. So that's found on the manage page, uh, and excuse me, my uh, but manage controller page, and this is a column here. The current depletion we'll see for uh, this this particular controller. Uh, is uh, listed, and in on WeatherTrack Central, you would need to go to uh, select the, and you could make changes to that, be it zero percent up to fifty percent on a selected or multiple selected stations. But now you can do this at a station by station level uh, here in the app. So current depletion has also made a made a. Uh, a debut so that that's going to be really handy for the, the power users that out there is awesome Lance mm. that is a huge power user addition because it really is at the heart of what that depletion model irrigation is mm -hmm. all about right if we are out in the field managing sometimes not only do I need to see it but I need to change it so if I'm making Absolutely. a repair and I run and run and run and run an irrigation station just to you know, check the repairs that I made. And that station is now full of water. I don't need to irrigate it tonight. Now I can just simply go into the app and reset the depletion. Yeah, right? and, it, and it makes it more accessible as we see in WeatherTrack Central, it is, it is part of something more complex with, the, with this uh, table here. And it's one of those rows that could be overlooked by, by people just by, na by uh, nature. But, but, it, if, uh, but having kind of bringing that over uh, all by itself, I think makes it a bit more accessible and, and it can be a powerful tool. Uh, and definitely. as somebody who has fielded many a phone call about the station high <laughs> flow or station high depletion alert. Okay. Uh, now we have the power to manage that right from the app. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Bob, would it be okay? Uh, I could show a few things that uh, will be coming out also in the next week, right? With the uh, weather track um yep. in 
one, uh, one of those is uh, actually, I can start over at uh, site map. And yeah, as part is, of our, we have a, a July release. It's kind of mm -hmm. a maintenance release, just making sure things are also working smoothly mm -hmm. and cleanly under the hood. So for next Tuesday, July 27th, we're gonna have a, a maintenance role. And then while we're in there, we also are gonna implement a few new functionalities and features. So no yeah. one's really seen this yet. So you guys are really the first to kind of get this. Preview. That is true. That is true. Um, it is, uh, and, and no real time flow yet, uh, Brandon, that is definitely on our, our to-do list. Um, we want to make uh, a, an area that in the app that really will be not only just for, for viewing real-time flow, but just a diagnostics area in general uh, that will have uh, additional information like the, the milliamp readings and other things that could be seen. Um, so, and yeah, there's a, just a, a little subtle, some additions on sitemap. This has just become more and more popular because the app now enables people to, to use that and add assets while they're physically on the site. So we're seeing sites with hundreds upon hundreds, uh, one that's just getting close to 800 assets on one site. This is not it, but, uh, but in that we've, we've added some uh, functionality, uh, very simple ones, just, just the affecting uh, the zoom resolution. So there's more steps now to when you zoom than there was before. If you use your mouse wheel, um, there's a few ways of just making rearranging the assets easier. When you click the lock and unlock icon, uh, a little checkbox, it will uncluster. As you notice, when you zoom out, the, the assets will cluster together um, when they get really close to each other. Um, but if you're needing to move an asset from say point A to point B, that clustering uh, could have gotten in the way and that, that clustering is disabled when relocating assets. There's an export assets uh, button now that will enable uh, you to export those uh, assets. And, and how does that export, Lance? How, what does that result in if you hit that export yeah. assets? Bob, what? Yeah, it's, it's a CSV file and so if, Lance, if you click on an asset and edit button, we have a number of different fields that are associated with a, a given as asset. So it's geolocation, the asset type, all of these different fields you see here, we'll export that for every asset into a CSV file. So then you can get all of your geolocations for every asset in one area, in case you need to copy paste that information over to a GSI file um, or make large bulk modifications. We had one customer who had a, one of their employees accidentally used the wrong asset type and then geolocated it 76 of them. So either they had to go back and redo it manually or they exported the file, changed the asset type with all of the same geolocations and then imported it and then had the changes show up. So it took instead of an entire days of work to make a bulk change, they took them like five minutes. Nice. So now you can export the information, use it, cut it up however you want in a CSV file, and then you can re-import that data to make changes as required. And this is, this is available for admin level users. So it's not anybody and everybody can't get in there and change things. So there are permission levels that help to yeah. manage it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. And I believe also we uh, will be introducing a new report. This is Ben's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if we scroll down here, we should see. Yeah, it's a count administrative report. All right, count Just a uh, little bit. And right then there we there. have the asset summary report, which will uh, generate a report that has uh, a lists all of the assets. And uh, let's see, um, we could do that for MetaView. <laughs> So to all of you who ask me, is there a report for this map? Can I get this on a piece of paper? Boom. Ask and you shall receive. Yes, yes, definitely. And we're going to really work hard to, to introduce and tweak uh, asset type reports in the future as well, because we, we know those can, can be very powerful. So it, it'll naturally create a lot of wishes in, in uh, how the reports will be generated, but uh, we're, we're definitely listening to those and want to have a, a nice suite of, of different types of reports in the, in the future that we, or, or options possibly that would 
make uh, those reports even more powerful. Um, and oh, I know we're running short on time, so I wanted to quickly show two other things uh, that uh, have been introduced. One is uh, a brand new website. And, and I think the marketing team at HydroPoint has done an unbelievable job with this um, and has brought together all of the, 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 the whole family of HydroPoint products underneath a single roof. And it looks fantastic and, uh, and is organized equally as well. So that if you do go to hydropoint.com, you'll see a, a new, a new, uh, new look and new options, both weather track, baseline, water compass, and all that now is brought underneath a single roof. And they, they've done a tremendous job. And uh, everything that I used to use, I've tested. And all of the places that I used to visit are still in there. So if you are looking for resources, they are still uh, involved with the website. All of the product documentation and access fun. to videos and all of that still lives there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it just is a reskin. Absolutely. Yeah, they they just they've done great, and, it, and it's really uh, going to grow and even be you know as it, as time goes on, uh, even 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 better than it already is. And and another thing we have introduced is a brand new knowledge base for uh, the weather track and baseline world. Uh, you'll see uh, that there are links to it on hydropoint.com. Uh, there are uh, categories that are very similar to how they are organized on the new weather track uh, dot, uh, and hydropoint website in baseline as well. So smart controllers, flow accessories, et cetera. And you'll come here and see the same uh, going all the way into a product. You'll see uh, all these amazing videos that Ben's putting out. We're, we're converting into articles uh, so they can be found under one roof. Um, the articles are not only great for uh, uh, a much easier to read than ever before, but they do respond very well to mobile. Uh, and so that's going to be great. And if you are in this environment, you can simply switch over to the baseline environment if need be and be able to search uh, and look through all of their, their great uh, material as well. Yeah. So that's- can you go back real quick, Lance? Absolutely. Some of you may, just, may have noticed that uh, ESP uh, Spanish button, what, what does that do? Ah, I don't know, no. Um, <laughs> actually, Good it, uh, wait, what's nice about this platform is that it auto translates. Uh, and so um, you will be able to go to an article and uh, I will admit not all of them yet have been transferred over. So I'm still there's 800 articles we're working through, but uh, the ones that we're used to having in uh, uh, Spanish are our alert articles and the mobile articles that have all been rewritten to reflect the new 3.5. But there's a little button at the top right that when clicked will bring you to uh, the translated version. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, so that is going to be great. So we can go to other, now like, granted auto translated, so uh, they're not going to be pristine but I think with the sheer amount of articles that we have, uh, it'll be nice to have something available for, for everybody, even if it uh, isn't. Uh, and over time, clearly, we want to make sure those get polished up. But I think they, they do get, get, get uh, do a pretty decent job. Yeah, a so. huge uh, benefit to Spanish-speaking resources, right? And we got to make sure that that sector of our audience and our user base is well taken care of. So this is a great step in that direction. Yeah, so, and, and John asked about uh, Android or Apple uh, phone, same or one better than other as sales support, I needed to to mobile info. Um, actually the, uh, you know, the app definitely is, it runs on both iOS and Android. They're identical to each other. I, I keep, uh, both actual phones that right next to me with them and during testing we're we're uh, uh, switching back and forth between them wanting to make sure they're as close to uh, to exact as 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 uh, as possible so um, there shouldn't be any difference you know it's they all have their 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 strengths when it comes to platform and it, a lot of times it just comes down to preference you know if, if people prefer uh, 
you know, Apple over Android is just from more about what type of app, other types of apps they've invested in or uh, uh, enjoy using. But as far as the experience for uh, WeatherTrack Mobile, it should be identical between. Yeah, the two. I test on both and can't tell the difference. Yes, yeah. Cool. So a lot of good stuff yes. coming out, and it is already out. Yeah. Awesome job, Very fellas. Exciting. Thank you Very so exciting. much. Let me take over the screen real fast and give a okay. plug toward next week. Uh, oh, I forgot to plug Smart Irrigation Month. What? What? Uh, Wearing the blue for Smart <laughs> Irrigation? Yeah, it's there's some blue there. <laughs> uh, we are always here to support you and looking forward to next week where I will host Andrew Chase from Monarch Environmental. He is a great water manager in lockstep with our uh, Smart Irrigation Month episodes. Uh, we had a basic view of what I wish I had known when I started. Andrew is an expert user, and he's going to talk about the advanced settings that he uses to really squeeze the extra gallons out, uh, the things that he sees in advanced management and, and weekly walks and checks of the system that he notices change across the season or different ways that he can experiment with the program to really help get maximized plant health and maximize water savings. So it should be a great episode. Nice. Um, Do we get everybody's questions? We did, I think. Fellas, Thanks, thank everybody. you so much for joining me this morning and making time. I really appreciate you. Um, anything else before we wrap it up? No, just thanks for the time and yes. we're excited to get new things out. And we've got a lot still on the plate. And in a couple mm -hmm. months, we'll have a lot of more <laughs> cool stuff to show you. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome sauce. Looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you, you next too. week. Take care. Bye. Bye.